It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Well, good day, everybody, and welcome to the program. We want to welcome back into our studio Zen Makarski uh, with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. Our radio listeners are going to be very familiar with Zen's voice and our TV viewers as well, as he was here just a couple of weeks ago talking about a number of things with Paul David. Paul got lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. And Zen, yeah, <laughs> today I'm going to get bunnies and, and <laughs> kitties and <laughs> things like that. Uh, but th thanks for, uh, t again, taking some time uh, all the way out of the Kingman office and uh, sharing uh, your knowledge uh, with us about uh, different things that we need to know as we warm up and spring and summer seem to be here. Uh, get outside and start enjoying the wild things that are out there. We need to understand how to enjoy the wild things that are out there. Absolutely, and thanks for having me on again, uh, Brad. I appreciate it. And. Uh uh, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about we uh, baby critters. We chatted a little bit about this uh, on the radio a couple of weeks ago uh, about if you're out walking in the forest and you happen upon, say, a nest of baby bunnies, a lot of folks are going to assume the nest has been abandoned. And this can be, you know, a lot of different kind of baby animals. Is that common and how should you react? Well, first thing is, you know, Game and Fish is not ignorant to the fact that in, in the people within Game and Fish, that people are trying to help. I mean, at least they believe they're helping. And that's why we do press releases such as that, is to say, you're really not. Yeah. Um, leave baby wildlife alone. And when we start talking about an animal like a, a rabbit, and there's a lot, and yeah. very rarely is wildlife abandoned. We got to think about the human, you know, aspect to this. You know, very, you know, people generally are not going to abandon their children, right. you know, and wildlife doesn't do it either. And what can happen is that somebody can stumble into an area, find a baby bunny or multiple bunnies, and mom and dad aren't there, mm -hmm. mom's not there in particular, and say, uh-oh, I, I need to save them. Mama got I, killed. It's, it's our instinct. Right. We, want, we want to do and we want to help. Uh, the problem is mom's probably very close by, and what happened is you scared mom away, and as soon as we leave the scene, mom returns to care for the young. She can flee, the babies can't, so right. she's not there. Do, would a mother, maybe not just rabbits, but any species, actually do that to set a distraction if they see Absolutely. you coming? Um, there are a number of bird species that will uh, try and lure you away by acting injured. Okay. And uh, you know, rabbits may just flee and hide. Mm -hmm. Once you vacate, they come back, they'll tend to the young. And the problem with, you know, and this is with, um, we're talking about bunnies here, but let, let's make sure everybody understands that this is with a lot of critters. Sure. Is that they bring them to game and fish or they bring them to a rehabber or something like that. In all likelihood, the animal's going to be euthanized. Yeah. Because the personnel don't, are just aren't there to do with baby bunnies, you know, 24 hour round the clock care. And, and even then, their odds of survival are very low. Right. So do what's best, leave them in the wild, and you know, it's not to sound crass, it's, it's life in the wild. Uh, if something comes along and eats them, well, that's the cycle in the wild. Right. I mean, it's what happens. And even with mom there, in all likelihood, at some point, not all these bunnies are gonna survive anyway. Yeah. Between the rattlesnakes, the coyotes, the bobcats, you know, well, coyotes and bobcats are gonna seek out, you know, the adults primarily. Uh, but there's a number of things uh, you start talking about, and a lot of people don't think about this, roadrunners. Uh -huh. They're voracious carn carnivorous animals. Is that right? Oh yeah, I've seen them take baby baby birds and just run off with them. <laughs> so, I mean, they're they're quite, they're quite the hunter. Yeah, and it, it, like you said, it, it can be a little tricky to think of it that way, but uh, Mother Nature has kissed her spell on, on the balance out there, and sometimes the little ones, you know, right. the circle start, of life, the food chain will continue to spin. Right, and we see baby birds on the ground. And I think it's important to mention that it's a myth, uh, and I'm sure everybody at some point in time has heard it, that if I touch this bird, mom and dad are gonna smell my scent and, oh, yeah. not, and, and kill the bird yeah. or kill the baby. Yeah. Well, you know, aside from, you know, turkey vultures, you know, birds don't have a sense of smell. Okay. 
So it's why you know an animal like a great horned owl can kill and eat a skunk. Uh -huh. uh, they don't have that sense of smell. So obviously it's a myth. And we would suggest just leave the, ba the, the birds on the ground, mom and dad will care for it, but if there's an immediate danger, and by that of course we're talking you know, pet dogs, cats, so forth, so on, uh, if there's an immediate danger, you can pick up the babies. If you can get them back into the nest, that's the best thing to do. Now you're talking about birds exclusively here or uh, maybe another animal that's... Well, for that particular one, obviously it's birds. Yeah. Because, you know, pick them up. But with, the, with that said, let's remember quail are ground-based birds. <laughs> you can find them on the ground so, anyway. So you find the babies on the <laughs> ground, don't start looking for a nest because there, there isn't one. Right. Right, right. Let me ask you this. Um, if we find an injured animal, uh, say an adult, but be it a bird, whatever uh, it may be. I saw a coyote once with a broken leg. I think he'd been hit by a car. Well, he knew where he was going and I let him walk right on by. Um, but do you intercept that or is it here again the same rule? Well, if, if it's an injured animal, um, well, first off, let's be very careful because injured animals can yeah. be very, very dangerous. Right. Uh, so my suggestion would be to call somebody that is a professional and can deal with this safely, uh, Arizona Game and Fish or, or some other you know, agency. Uh, there are people who work for uh, wildlife services. You can call Game and Fish. If we can't respond, we can give you a number of somebody who maybe can. Uh, but in your instance, like with a coyote, by the time right. anybody got there, yeah. the coyote's gonna be well on its way. How are we gonna find it? I right. mean, it, it's, it's just not gonna work out. Um, if it's so severely injured, uh, it will be humanely euthanized. If it, uh, we start talking about birds of prey, uh, like hawks, falcons, uh, if it can be rehabbed at least to a point where you know it can be released, they'll keep it wild. Right. Uh, if it can't ever be released, uh, well, you know the Adobe uh, Mountain Wildlife Rehabilitation Center, which is Arizona Game and Fish. Uh -huh. Uh, they do use some critters for uh, educational purposes. Uh, so they'll bring them to events, and these are the ones that can never be released. Right now, I know they have a, uh, a great horned owl yeah. that flew into a meth fire <clears throat> down oh in my. Phoenix, lost part of its wing. They have another, uh, they have another hawk that uh, was electrocuted to the point where it, it, you know, a huge portion of its wing is gone, and they use those for education. Okay. If you do, in that circumstance though, you're still not gonna try to uh, capture or contain the animal yourself, are you? For the public? Yeah. I, I would strongly advise, Make like I said, the public call. to be very, very careful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, call, call somebody. Right. Um, we start talking about, we were just talking about birds of prey. Those talons will shred you. You bet. And those beaks, <laughs> they'll shred yeah. you as well, yeah. so and, you gotta be very careful. And I understand I'm asking you a question that you almost can't answer because every yeah. circumstance is gonna be different, every animal, right. every location is gonna determine all of these things. But just as rules of thumb, just think, I guess, is kind of the thing to, to know right. when you're out interacting with wildlife and you come up on these situations. Right. And, and it's important people understand we only have X, you know, X number of wildlife managers to yeah. cover millions and millions of square acres. Yeah, uh, We can't always respond within, you know, I called you a half hour ago, you guys aren't here yet. Right. We can have an individual coming to the scene who's the closest person and they might be three or four hours away yeah. just because they're out doing their job. Right. It's gonna take a little time. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more with Zen Makarski. Let's talk venomous critters when we come back. Sure. Some rules, if you're again out of the forest, you run into that diamond bag, how do you handle it? We'll take a break, Countywide's back after this. Here in Northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. With over a hundred years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your Northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. Hi, I'm Steve Scourgey with Yavapai Silent Witness. Marcel Gonzalez was murdered on this spot almost 15 years ago back in March of 1997. We know that there is somebody out there who knows what happened in the alley that night. Yavapai Silent Witness is offering an $11,000 cash reward 
for information that leads to the arrest of Marcel's killer. For Yavapai Silent Witness, I'm Steve Skurja. The pain will not control us. It will never break us, define us, or keep us still. Because arthritis can't beat us if we beat it first. In the fight against arthritis, you need a weapon. What's yours? Visit the Arthritis Foundation at fightarthritispain.org. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to the program. It's Countywide. Our guest today again with Arizona Game and Fish, Zen Makarski. Uh, you've been at this a long time. Uh, I'm in my department. I'm almost uh, almost 10 years now. Okay, so you've been doing this. You're our go-to guy when we uh, um, uh, have questions or, or whatnot. So we've been chatting with you. It seems like even even longer than that than Paul and I and our uh, radio and uh, TV audience will be familiar with uh, Mr. Makarski. But um, uh, let's go to venomous critters here again. Let's that scenario. Brad and his family are out camping. We hear a rattle, or we this that, or the dog. Uh, find something that he's yapping away at, and you go and you look, and maybe say you've got a rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to pick it up. I'll promise you that. But what do you do? <laughs> First off, thank you for not picking it up. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> thank yourself. Um, well, you do, give it a wide berth. Yeah. Uh, number one, uh, if it's if you're camping um, and it's getting too close to the camp area. Get yourself a good long stick. I mean, okay. don't don't get yourself in a position where you know it can strike at you. Lunge at you. You know, and try and direct it into a new, uh, you know, a different area. Yeah. Um, the snake doesn't want to see you either. Well, right. really, they don't want to bite right. you. Their venom is actually designed for. Well, it is a defense mechanism. Right. But without the venom, they don't eat. So, okay. you know, biting you, obviously, they're not going to consume you. So they would rather use their venom on, on, on a food source. Yeah. So, you know, give them a wide berth. Uh, you know, they can, it, it's not quite this much, but, you know, you run into a five foot rattlesnake, you know, give them 10 feet, you know. <laughs> I like that rule. You know, ju just be super safe. <laughs> Actually, they can only strike about half their body length. Okay. So even if you were within five feet, they're not gonna be able to strike, but right. let's be ultra safe. Why not? You know, I mean, let's let's not get bit. It's an extremely painful experience. Um, I've been called into the emergency room to ID snakes, which really isn't necessary. But some people, after they get bit, they want to know what it was. Yeah. So I've been called in the ER, and I asked one gentleman, "What's the pain level you're experiencing?" And he said a six. And I said, "They've given you painkillers?" And he said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "What was the pain level before the painkillers?" And he said it was a ten. It on hurts. A scale of 10. I've heard that. Um, so that it's a uh, let let let's just be careful with all these critters yeah. and give them a wide berth and you know let's understand their behavior. Yeah. During the heat of summer, well, let's let's not talk about heat of summer. Let's talk about you know you know April, May, June, you know sure. very early June. Uh, where we're still getting a little cool at night. Right. They're gonna come out first thing in the morning to sun themselves. So okay. when you, if you're out running in the morning, uh, taking a hike in the morning, look in the middle of the trails. All right, just, just keep your eyes very focused on where you're stepping. Now as, as the day progresses, uh, I'm sorry, the season progresses and we start having very hot temperatures, they're gonna be more active at night and during the day they're going to seek some shade. Okay. So on the sides of the trails where you got bushes and right. whatnot, keep your eyes out there okay. uh, on the sides. Look in the shaded areas. Very hard to spot them in the shade. But to give you an example, might look like a cow patty, uh -huh. you know, or something like that. You right. know, when they curl up. Right. So keep your eyes out for that. And again, if you see it, you know, uh, just just give a wide berth. No need to panic. 
And are you going to run into a rattlesnake? I don't want to scare anybody because, you know, are you going to run into one every time you go out on a, a jog or a hike? The right. answer is no. Right. I mean, it, it's just not. I, I come out to talk about, you know, safety. But let's say everything else failed. Right. And poor Brad. Yeah. Right. Was out walking around, <laughs> and because it's a myth that they always rattle. They I was going to say it's it's That's not true that I mean I, I know a lady who got bit and it didn't rattle at all. She no, just stepped right on it. Right. Yeah. And 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 it's it's unfortunate. I don't like to hear people getting bit because right. it, it's just a not a good experience. But let's say everything else failed, you got bit. Yeah. What do I do now? Bingo. Right. Rule number one, and this is easier said than done. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> stay calm. Okay, stay you calm. Know, stay calm. And I understand the initial thought is going to be, oh, no, I've been bit by a rattlesnake. Right. You know, so you're going to have that initial adrenaline rush. But calm yourself down. And when I say that, I'll say this. You have time. Mm -hmm. We don't have, disregard all the myths you've heard even about the Mojave. Right. We do not have what they call a three-step and drop snake where you get three steps and you're dead. We don't have that in the state. So you have time to get to a medical facility. Think about that and calm yourself down. You need to slow, your heart, slow down your heart rate. And number two, remove any restrictive clothing. Okay. And everybody says, well, I don't wear any. Well, let's think about this. Your watch, uh -huh. you know, something like your watch, your belt. Okay. Uh, we can remove these things. Uh, you know, people who wear, uh, women who wear, you know, maybe tight jewelry. Right. Uh, remove that. And we don't, obviously, if we're out in the wild, we don't want to remove our shoes. Uh-huh. But what can we do? Yeah. We can remove our shoelaces. Okay. You know, to make, make that nice and comfortable. If you're hiking with somebody else and you're you're really, you know, a ways away, you can send a friend for help and but make sure you're seated in a, a shaded area, not in you know, right out in the middle of the sun. Uh, you stay calm and like I said, and get to a medical facility, disregard all the myths, you know, that you've seen on TV. Uh, you cannot suck out venom. Right. I think about when the doctor gives you a needle, you know, you get an injection, you can't suck out the venom, the, the, the medicine. Right. So <laughs> what makes you think you can suck out the venom? The, John rattles, Wayne movies. A rattlesnake's, you think you a rattlesnake's fangs are hypodermic needles. Yeah. You know, so once, once they bite, it, it's a done deal. Gotcha. You, okay, so let, let's understand that. And when you're young and mom's tending to you, and you sprain your ankle, what's the first thing she wants to slap on there? Puts ice on there. Ice. And it hurts. You know, you put ice on it. It yeah. hurts, put ice on it. Right. It hurts, put more ice on it. Well, let's remember, ice will lock that venom into that one specific area. Uh -huh. Very bad idea. You want to let the venom flow through your body. Okay. You so don't want to, you don't, it will attack very aggressively if we tie a tourniquet, which is, for those who don't know what a tourniquet is, it's a very tight band wrapped around. You see sure. it in a lot of military movies. Uh, where they tie a tourniquet to stop the blood loss. Right. No tourniquets, uh, no ice, and certainly don't try and slice open the wound area and suck out venom. Uh, these are all really bad ideas. Uh, just medical facility and anti-venom treatment. And another thing you can remember, you know, when you're trying to calm yourself down is about approximately 30% of rattlesnake bites are what they call a dry bite, which means that no, it doesn't mean there was no venom injected, it means there wasn't enough injected for treatment. I have heard that baby rattlesnakes or young rattlesnakes are more dangerous or that they'll use more venom when they bite than, a, than an adult. Is, that, is there anything to that? Well, there's been, and I, I am unaware of any research that, you know, and there might be out there. Yeah. I, I mean, it's hard I, to keep up on all this, but that I have not read any research personally that says uh, that they inject any more or any less. Okay. I mean. Uh, there has been talk, can they control, you know, can an adult control its venom? Right. And I am not sure whether that's true or not either. In other so, words, can they bite you and then bite your sister? <laughs> well, Will it, if they inject venom and if, and if they've just eaten, they need about 10 days to replenish the venom. Okay, there so you go. So let's say they've bitten a, 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 we talked about baby bunnies earlier. Right. Let's say they've bitten a bunny right. and consumed the bunny. Well, they need about 10 days. That's where a, a dry bite can come from. Okay. Is that they've already bitten something else and, and injected the venom. Gotcha. So I, I did not know that. I didn't. I, mean, I certainly didn't know it it took that time to, uh, that much time to uh, replenish, if yeah. you will. And, and you know, I just tell people, be smart. Yeah. You know, yeah. we were talking earlier, you and I, off, you know, before we went on air about uh, what is the major group. You know, I, I don't know exactly, but it's something like 16 to 24 years old. Males. 
males, and involves two influencing factors, alcohol and girls and women showing off so yeah showing yeah. off and i and like i always you know we talked about it, i said they're not, you're not going to look real tough being rushed to the er while you're crying your eyes yeah. out you know yeah. so yeah. yeah so let's let, let's not do that look and at let's this be careful right All you know right. common once again common sense is going to carry the day we'll take another short break when we come back more with zen mccarsky arizona game and fish uh being safe on the forest that's our subject to countywide we'll be back after this Here in northern Arizona and throughout Yavapai County, people count on Orkin Pest Control. With over a hundred years of combined experience, nobody knows how to protect your home or your business from harmful or annoying pests like the Orkin Man. To start service, contact your northern Arizona Orkin Pest Control. In the Verde Valley, call 567-5100 or Orkin Pest Control in the Prescott area at 775-8772. I'm Steve Scourgey with Yavapai Silent Witness. Marcel Gonzalez was murdered on this spot almost 15 years ago back in March of 1997. We know that there is somebody out there who knows what happened in the alley that night. Yavapai Silent Witness is offering an $11,000 cash reward for information that leads to the arrest of Marcel's killer. For Yavapai Silent Witness, I'm Steve Scourgey. Two million kids play doctor by taking pills not prescribed to them. Talk to your kids about the dangers of prescription drug abuse. The partnership at drugfree.org. We welcome you back to the program. Just a couple more minutes with Zen McCarsky, Arizona Game and Fish. Uh, everybody seems to think about rattlesnakes. If you go out camping, hiking, and that, and you're thinking about rattlesnakes, and you were kind of attuned to them, we're used to them uh, in Arizona, in the, in the great south, southwest. What is maybe a venomous creature or a creature? You talked a couple weeks ago with Paul about the bigger predators, the cats and the bears. Uh, but what is maybe a, a, one, a critter that kind of gets overlooked, we don't think about, that can maybe cause a little conflict if uh, there's a human and an animal okay. interaction? Well, one of them maybe uh, that we would think about is the Gila monster. The Gila monster. Uh, and a lot of people say, I've never seen one. Well, you're not supposed to. They spend about 95% of their life is spent underground. They come out in the spring for their first feeding, first drink of water. They'll go back underground throughout the heat of the summer. They'll come out during monsoons. But it is one of only two uh, lizards in North America, dangerous to people, and the only one in the United States that's dangerous to people. And uh, they are venomous. Some people believe it's, it's just their saliva, that it's not true. They are venomous. They have a venom gland in the back of their jawline, uh -huh. and it, they don't have fangs, so they can't bite and release like a rattlesnake. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of real sharp, like, razor teeth, and they bite on, they latch on, and they start to grind. Oh. And the longer they stay on, the more venom they can inject. So the best thing with a heel monster, though, is they're the easiest venomous critter for me to teach people about. You leave them alone, they leave you alone. So it really, it really is that simple. And let's keep in mind, it's against the law to, to remove one, harass, or kill a hill monster. They're a protected species in the state. Yeah. So if you do get bit, um, I've never heard of an accidental bite. And if we investigate and find out 
you know, you got bit because you did something to the heel monster, not only do you suffer the convulsions and the vomiting and the extreme pain, <laughs> you get to wake up with a ticket next year. A bed. fine, a fine from Game and Fish. So. All right. Best bets out there. Zen, thank you so much. Again, common sense is often going to carry the day uh, when there's a conflict or a confrontation between you and the, a wild animal. If you see critters on the ground and their babies, leave them alone. Mom's probably very close by our, our lessons today. Zen Mikarski, Arizona Game and Fish, it's countywide, and we'll see you next time.